I've gotten pretty passionate about cocktail mixology over the last couple of years, and I thought I'd share with you how to make one of my favorite spirit forward cocktails. Just a moment before I do, I need to provide some background on this drink. When I first started getting into mixology, a friend recommended I check out the world-renowned cocktail bar in Toronto called Bar Chef, a modern cocktail bar owned and spearheaded by the creative mind of Frankie Solaric, who now also has an additional claim to fame as a judge on the hit Netflix cocktail competition series, Drink Masters. In his book, The Bar Chef, he details a lot of his beautiful creations, including his syrups, bitters, and spirit infusions, and included is his signature drink at Bar Chef since 2008, the vanilla and hickory smoked Manhattan. Following his instructions as a guideline, I've honed in on what I think is an accurate depiction of this highly influential Canadian's cocktail. To introduce the ingredients, I'll start with the base spirit, Crown Royal Special Reserve. I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison of this with standard Crown Royal, but I think any premium rye whiskey will do, as long as it's not too anise forward because the bitters will carry enough of that flavor. Next is the vanilla syrup. It's simply split vanilla beans that were simmered in a ratio of two to one sugar to water. Frankie's instructions are to actually reverse that ratio, but I prefer using less volume with a sweeter syrup to save inventory space and longevity. Frankie also instructs to smoke the syrup when it's done, but I skipped that in hopes to again preserve the longevity of the syrup in the fridge. And I think the drink will be smoky enough in the end. Next is the vanilla and cherry bitters. This is a rye infusion that was packed full of seeds and spices, along with cherry and vanilla pods, of course. Infused over three months, this packs a punch of anise, cinnamon, and cardamom with subtle characteristics of vanilla and cherry. Frankie's philosophy with bitters is for them to be a mild enough infusion to use up to a half ounce for one drink. My infusion, however, came out a strong enough flavor to only need a couple of dashes. So I think Frankie would agree to use your palate and find out how your particular ingredients are best balanced together. Lastly is the easiest ingredient to make, a jar full of brandy with a few vanilla beans in it for two or more months. I patiently infused mine for four months and it came out amazing. Very aromatic vanilla paired with the natural sweetness and vanilla notes inherently in the brandy is just to die for. Brandy being a distillate of wine serves as a reimagined substitute for what is typically sweet vermouth, a fortified wine, in this take on a Manhattan. Now let's talk about tools. Firstly, you'll need a mixing glass. Any glass will do. It is just for combining the ingredients before pouring it into your presentation glass. You will need a jigger, small measuring cup, or a tablespoon for measuring the brandy and whiskey. You will need a bar spoon to measure approximately an eighth of an ounce and to stir the ingredients. You will need a butane torch of some kind. This small one is handy for a few things, but if you want to make a larger cloche presentation, you will probably want a larger torch. An optional but less theatrical alternative to the cloche smoking method is one of these smoke tops. They're cheap, easy to use, and more suitable indoors. They also don't cover your serving glass and smoke residue. If you don't have one of these, I recommend you get one if you like smoky drinks. But if you do want to go full theater, you will need a cloche no smaller than this. You'll also need a heat and fire resistant base. I just covered the wooden base that came with the cloche with aluminum foil. Lastly is your largest, heaviest, fanciest low ball rocks glass. I'm using the Norlin Rauk Heavy Tumbler. This is what Bar Chef uses as the presentation glass for the smoked Manhattan. It is large enough to fit an ice sphere over two and a half inches in diameter. It is 800 grams with most of its weight in the base. Using a thin and light base glass for this could perhaps crack under the shock of cold in the glass and heat from the smoldering hickory. I almost forgot to mention, you'll need dried hickory chips, fine ones for the smoke top method or chunky ones for the cloche method. All right, let's get to composing this drink. In your mixing glass, throw in two dashes of vanilla and cherry bitters. If you feel you didn't get enough of the anise flavor coming through when we're done, you can always add another dash or two to taste. Next, add one ounce of vanilla brandy. The recipe calls for only half an ounce, but I love the taste of this and like bumping this up to what is more similar to a classic Manhattan spec. Next, add an overflowing bar spoon of the vanilla syrup. I like to think of this as what sweetens the brandy to a similar level of sweetness as the sweet vermouth component in a classic Manhattan. Depending on the sugar content of the syrup and your particular preferences, play with this amount to your liking. I give it a stir to get the syrup off the spoon. Lastly, add two ounces of Crown Royal Special Reserve or whichever rye you have chosen. Give this a good stir to allow the syrup to fully combine into the cocktail. It's easier to do this now while the drink isn't cold. Now that the ingredients are combined, add a large ice sphere to your presentation.
fermentation glass. I carved this myself to fit the glass very snug. If you don't have any large ice, smaller ice cubes will be okay, but the drink will dilute very quickly, and let's face it, it wouldn't look nearly as nice. If your presentation ice came straight out of the freezer, let that ice sit at room temperature for a couple of minutes to give it time to temper, so it doesn't crack when you pour your cocktail over it. After pouring the cocktail onto the presentation ice, immediately start torching the hickory chips in the base. I also incorporated a cut up vanilla bean in the hickory chips, as per the recipe, but this detail can be understandably skipped as they're not very cheap. Keep in mind this should probably be done outside if you don't want to set off any smoke alarms. Once you have a little campfire going, blow out the flame and have your glass ready to sit on top of the smoldering hickory, then immediately cover it with the cloche. There was a little bit still on fire there, but I knew it would go out soon after suffocating it. Now you can present it to your guest, or yourself, but be patient and wait two to three minutes for the smoke to infuse into the drink before lifting the cloche. After three minutes, or when most of the smoke has dissipated to reveal the drink inside, lift off the cloche. The aroma would have already enveloped the area and it smells great. You may want to wipe down the bottom and sides of the glass with a cloth to remove smoky residue and ash, but I didn't care and just went for it. Oh man, it's delicious. Obviously smoky on the nose, but when incorporated into the deep, rich vanilla flavors, paired with the hint of anise and spice on the bitter finish, this makes a lengthy, toasty, roasted marshmallow with complex caramel and subtle notes of dried fruit that is just irresistible. This is a strong drink, so take your time and let the ice slowly dilute and create a changing evolution of flavor until the last sip. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them in the comments. Share this with your cocktail enthusiast buddies and let me know if you want to see more content. Drink responsibly and enjoy, friends.